In this video I will show you what to have in mind when building a homemade electric longboard. This is a project still in progress. In my case I had some problems. So this won't be a how to make an electric longboard, but more like what to make sure that you won't do when building one. Once I get better parts and finishing 3D printing the case for the components, I will make a full tutorial on how to make it. Anyway, in this video I will get the electronics part of the longboard to work, but the mechanical part quality is not as expected. We will see the parts that we need, types of longboard, the size of the wheels, the motor brackets, all the electronics that we need and how to receive radio signal and control the motor. We will study the different options that we have and finally build and test the electric longboard. Before we start, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. Also, thanks to all my patrons for the support. So, let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. The first error that I've made was to order some parts for this project before receiving the longboard. Because you must have the longboard before ordering all the parts. In that way you could make precision measures and know for sure that the parts will fit. In my case, I wanted two motors. But once I had everything, I realized that placing two motors one next to the other is impossible because they are too long. And this mistake is due to not knowing the distance between the wheels before ordering. Also, the diameter of the hole of the motor bracket is too small for this wheel shaft. It only enters on the tip and it should get almost around here, more or less. That's why I had to cut part of the metal in order to fit. Also, the bracket itself is not the best quality. So, I would like to talk about all these problems and show you how to select all the parts for an electric longboard. This is what we need for this project. First, of course, the longboard. I've bought mine for very cheap from Amazon, just around $60. If you are able to get all the longboard parts separately, that will be even better. In that way you can select the shaft that you need and the correct size of the wheels. I bought a few types of wheels to test them, so in this way you won't have to do that. I realized that it is a lot better to just buy the wheels that already have holes because later we will have to screw the pulley on these wheels. For example, the stock wheels of my longboard are fully filled and made out of plastic and silicone. So I would have to drill holes through the entire wheel and that might break the wheel or maybe not be centered enough and move the pulley around and give any other kind of problems. That's why I've also tried this kind of wheels that already have the holes so you could pass the screws of the pulley very easy. Another thing that I've noticed is that the width of the wheels should be a little bit smaller. Because after you place the pulley, there will be very little space left, so you might want to use big diameter wheels, but the width of the wheels not that big. Then we need the pulley system. For that I've bought this kit that already has the screws that you need, the pulley and the belt ready to use. The pulley gets screwed directly on the wheel without any nuts since it already has threaded holes and the small one gets fixed in place on the shaft of the motors with three small screws as well. This pulley system seems to be quite good. The thing that I'm not quite satisfied with is the support bracket for the motor. First, as I said before, the hole was too small for the shaft of the wheels, so I had to cut part from the shaft and that is not recommended. Also the entire support is too thin and will get fixed in place using three simple screws. When I've made a post on Instagram, a lot of you guys told me that these supports are very bad. And it seems that yes, they won't last too long. So you should have in mind to look for stronger and better made supports. I would really like to have a good CNC machine to mill my own parts out of aluminum. Ok, now for the electronics, we need the battery pack that we have made in a previous video. Links for that video are below. But if you don't have that battery pack, you could also go with some 6S LiPo batteries. Ok, so then we need the ESCs. A lot of you guys recommended me the VESC. Since I'm using quite big motors and I've already used this kind of ESCs in my electric scooter project, which by the way is still a work in progress, I know that this ESC from Racerstar behaves very well. It could deliver up to 120 amps continuously, it has its own fan to keep it cool and it could get both forward and backwards. All we need is to supply power and the PWM signal to the signal pin. 
Next we need a powerful motor and for that I went with the N5060 Outer Runner brushless motor. It is very powerful and it is a 400kV one. Of course I have two of each of these components since I wanted a double motor electric longboard to be more powerful and with a lot of torque. This motor has holes for the screws and it fits perfectly on this motor supports. Finally, we need the radio transmitter and receiver. For that I've ordered this mini 2.4GHz remote controller that has a 2 channel receiver. The knob can go both ways and it also has a switch in case we want to add front lights to the longboard. It is rechargeable using a simple USB cable. I've also ordered some extra components, such as a 6S voltage meter, a push button switch to power on the longboard and some extra connectors. Have in mind that you will also need a charger for your Li'an or LiPo batteries. In my case I could use my old charger that could work with 6S batteries or just use my power supply for that. Ok now we have everything that we need. But the problem is that I want to add my own delay for the motor control. For that we will also need an Arduino. This is the schematic for this project and have in mind that this is just for one motor. You also have the dual motor schematic below. Before we connect everything I want to show you something. I connect the motor to the ESC. Then I connect the radio receiver to the signal cable of the ESC. Be careful which one is VCC and ground so we won't plug the connector backwards. I also plug the pairing cable. Now I connect the battery to the ESC and the entire system will power on. Now turn on the radio remote and at the same time press the pairing button. When the receiver LED will stop blinking the system is paired. This is what I want to show you. If you directly control the motor with the radio receiver the speed changes are very hard. Look what happens when I release the throttle. As you can see the motor stops immediately. If you are riding the longboard you don't want that to happen, otherwise you will be thrown away or the entire bell system will crash. That's why we need to add a delay to the PWM signal that controls the speed and probably make a more logarithmic scale so at the beginning we have low speeds and at the end we have high speeds. I've measured the PWM signal of the receiver and these are the values. Ok so that's why I connect the receiver to an Arduino. For now I'm using an Arduino Uno for tests but for the final project I will use an Arduino Nano because it is smaller. Supply the Arduino from the ESC as well and the PWM signal will be given by the Arduino just as in the schematic. For that I upload a simple code that will read the received PWM signal, map that value to the desired values and also add a small delay each time we change the speed. As you can see now on my oscilloscope the speed change of the signal is much slower. So I make the connections as in the schematic. I upload the code to the Arduino and test the motor rotation once again. As you can see I have a slow acceleration at the beginning and when I'm slowing down the process is way slower. You might want to adjust this delay in the code after you make a few test runs with the longboard. Ok guys so I first cut a little bit of metal from the longboard shaft so the support will fit and I also change all the stock wheels from the longboard with the bigger ones and with holes for the pulley. I screw in place the motor to the motor support but I don't tie the screw too much for now so the motor could slide from side to side. Then I add the small pulley and screw that tight. Now I add the support to the shaft and with those three screws I fix that in place but not too tight. We will tie that after we add the pulley and the belt. Ok so I take one of the wheels and I pass four screws to the holes and I fit in place the big pulley and tie the screws. Now I add the belt and then I add the wheel and tie the knot of the wheel. Now I pull the motor backwards till the belt is very tight and then I press the motor screws. Ok so now we have the motor mounted. Now I need a case where I could place the ESCs, 
the battery pack and the receiver and also maybe the voltage level indicator and the on off button. I'm looking for a very strong case, since this will be on the bottom side of the longboard and could easily touch the ground and break. That's why 3D printing a case was not my first idea. I also wanted to be very cheap, so I thought on using this mailbox since it is made out of metal, but this case is too tall, so it will definitely touch the ground. But I really wanted to make this project as low cost as possible, so buying a $50 aluminum case is not recommended. Also have in mind that by using bigger diameter wheels, the board will be higher from the ground, which gives you a better clearance. Another thing to have in mind is that when you ride it, the board has to be able to flex, so the case should not occupy the entire length of the board. One of my biggest problems for this project is the case. That's why I've ended this project here for now, till I will find a better case. Right now I'm 3D printing a case for the battery and one for the electronics, but this is like a 15 hour sprint for each part. So stay tuned for the next video where I will put all inside of the 3D case and make a test of the longboard as well and see how bad or good will the motor support handle the ride. For now the part that most preoccupies me is the motor support bracket, it doesn't seem very strong. I'm sharing the links for all the parts below of this video. The ESCs and the motors are very powerful, are water resistant and the ESC has its own cooling fan. For now, we know that the electronic system works, but in the next part, we will see if the mechanical part will also work. You have the schematic, the code that I've used, and also the 3D printed parts and all the dimensions below in the description. So check the links for my webpage electronoops.com. If you like my videos, consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Also make sure you subscribe and activate the notification bell for future videos. Also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember that your help on Patreon means a lot for me and will keep these kind of videos going. So thanks again and see you later guys.